trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. We've got a lot of patterns completing today, boys and girls. So we're going to start out with the German DAX. As you can see, we finally completed that big ABCD pattern up in this area. So it looks like it's going to go up forever. That's what it looks like to me. If we take a look here at the... Um, E-mini S&P on a weekly basis. We'll get this up so you folks can take a quick look at it. You'll notice that we have an ABCD pattern that ends up here at around 3076. We've been to 3083 or 84, I think, this morning. So whether that means, and I remember when these patterns fail, folks, they fail badly sometimes. I wanted to share with you uh, one of the ones from our good friend, Arch Crawford, who we had on last week. By the way, our guest today at the half hour will be Bill Meridian of uh, cycles research out of Vienna, Austria. And later on in the week, we're going to have Stan Harley, and uh, that'll be fun. So we'll have those folks on. But here is the chart that Art had in his book. It is in his newsletter, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, this is that expanding triangle, uh, also known as a broadening top, a reverse point wave. And that's what we're, which we're looking at uh, with this. We're seeing it in a lot of different markets. But as I mentioned, the thing that, the thing that is most worrisome that I talked about uh, in the newsletter, folks, uh, is this right here. I want to get this to your attention so you can see it, is that we left a gap in the uh, S&P 500 on Friday. You notice how it gapped up? Now, we made the point, D, and we're going to be gapping up again today, so we're going to have two gaps, uh, and there'll be three and four and five. Who knows? But anyway, whenever you have gaps like that, those are big danger signs. You don't know whether, you know, what's going to happen because it's very, very dangerous when you have these gaps. And with news the way it is, my gosh, and it's also called a megaphone. You're absolutely pick right, peak D. But there was another one that was also interesting. Look what happened in the uh, NASDAQ composite. Now, if you take a look at the NASDAQ composite, you're going to see it did almost the same thing here. It gapped up above the highs that we had back on the 28th of October and closed really strongly. Folks, you, you have to flat out respect that. There's just nothing else you can do. Wait, you know, if you want to be a short seller, wait till it rolls over, would be my guess. But uh, that's what I'd be watching uh, today. Those are some of the things. We're seeing these megaphone patterns everywhere. Um, they're, they're just, uh, you know, they're, they just keep going up and up. So you, you can't stand in front of it. And if they fail, they fail very badly. So who knows? The things that are that are causing this, I have no idea. I mean, uh, all I, I, I'm just a chartist, folks. I just look at the patterns and, you know, do the best I can. Now, the one, there were two patterns that those were two of the most important ones. But uh, uh, before we get to that, I want to make some salutations here from some of our folks here. Let's get this up here. One of them is from our friend uh, Steve Rhodes at TFNN. These are the, the rankings for the Timer Digest, long-term timers. As you'll notice, uh, well, Kerry Szymanski, he's my student here in Tucson, Arizona. Known him for about 25 years. He's number one. You'll notice that Steve Rhodes is down here at number six. And we got Tim Bose there at number seven. So uh, it's been, all the folks we have on the air here are pretty good. So that gives you a little bit of a, a feedback. I, I'm on that list, folks but it's way down at the bottom. Of the, and I haven't done that for many, many years. Uh, by the way, I, I wanted to give my salutations also out to McDonald's. They fired their CEO for being a little little, uh, a little antsy-pantsy, whatever it's called. But he, he would have followed the old Italian proverb that my grandpa told me when I first started to go to school. And he said, son, the grass may be greener on the other side of the fence, but it's certainly a lot harder to chew. And that's going to cost him about $10 million large, so I hope he remembers that. Also, they showed some pictures of Austin, Texas, one of the most beautiful places in the South, is a uh, incredible, and they showed all the homeless that were there. I was shocked to see that many homeless uh, in Austin. I'm not surprised. They, if I were homeless, that's one of the places I'd go because the weather's nice, the people are really nice. And uh, anyway, I almost bought. A, in fact, I did. I bought a home in 1980. I bought a home down there at the Onion Creek Country Club down in. Uh, in Austin. It was right next door to Daryl Royal, the retired coach of the 
the uh, Texas uh, Longhorns, and I lived in. Well, I never lived in it. I owned it for two weeks, and my family came down, and we were waiting to, you know, see the realtor and stuff. And my two daughters found two large bugs in the hotel room, very large bugs, and that was the end of Austin, Texas. We were back in California for the remainder. So let's keep in mind. <laughs> anyway, the one thing I did want to remember, I was thinking about Billy Ray Valentine today and uh, Aretha Franklin, who was his very dear friend. And one of her great, great uh, uh, songs was Respect, R-E-S-P-C-T. And boy, that's what you have to do when you see these gaps up in these market folks, because when they go, they can really go. And uh, you don't want to stand in front of it. So we'll just uh, wait and see you know, how the thing ends up as we get through here. We got the market getting ready to open pretty soon, and we'll see, uh, you know, what's going to happen with it. But it's a little, uh, let's say we're still up uh, quite a bit. Uh, it, the, only way, the only way that this turns bearish, folks, is if we turn down. That's the only way that you turn bearish is if it turns down. That's the only way that, uh, that you can do it. Yep. Hold on one second. Oh, I got to do something here, folks. Uh... Okay, now the next one we want to do. Uh... Okay, hold on. Let's, uh... Let's move on here to the next one. Uh, hold on a second here. Uh, trying to do too many things at once, folks. Just give me a second. I've got to take care of this. Otherwise, uh... what? Well, well... Just a second. <laughs> Sorry, folks. It's either do this or not do this radio show, and I've got to do this. So that's all there is to it. Let's move on. Any questions this morning, 877-927-6648. I'll be happy to answer it. There's a couple of markets that are really in um, really in important spots, folks. One of them, of course, re revolves around a whole bunch of different things, and that is the U.S. dollar in these currencies, the euro, the pound, the yen. All of these have had major moves moves in here, but you'll notice that we went down here and we have touched that 61% uh, retracement. We have gone out, we have gone below the lows of the uh, 21st by just a little bit this morning. We haven't done, we haven't done any damage yet, but we did go below it. And right now it's trading just a little above 9,700. So it's still holding that area. And as long as it does that, it's still got a chance. But if it doesn't, then you're, you know, this thing could really break to the downside, which means the euro would do just the exact opposite, and that means it would go up quite a bit. So those are something that uh, this is a real critical area. In fact, it's a critical area in every single thing that we're looking at. Bonds, stocks, everything is really critical. And I don't see anything astrological in here that would, uh, you know, make any difference, but uh, that's neither here nor there. A lot, of that, a lot of times we don't see that at all. So we want to keep in mind that that's what's going on. We've got another one that we've got to do something with today, and that's going to be when we come back from our break. Uh, we're going to be talking about the natural gas. It had a big gap up this morning, and uh, we need to uh, pay attention to that because we've been very bullish this for a long time, and we'll see here. All right, we'll be right back. 877-927-6648. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, I posted the chart of the natural gas. Uh, you'll see the large ABCD pattern, the C point being down there at the 78% level, alerted to us by Mr. Z. And about 3 o'clock this morning, he forwarded on that he was starting to liquidate his uh, natural gas contracts. And as you can see, that big ABCD pattern is right up here. So I would have to go along with that. There's a big gap. And of course, these gaps are usually filled. Um, maybe not in our lifetimes, but they are filled. And uh, so that's a heck of a profit. And so I would certainly recommend, you know, taking profits, even though it is up uh, on a gap. I still think it's uh, uh, smart to do that. The other, the other thing you could do, of course, is to put your stop uh, on a reversal day. You don't want you would not want that to go to negative on the day. That would really be a reversal sign on that. But frankly, the, the, when you're right at that ABCD, you don't want to be greedy. The greedy become the needy, as they say in the trade here. So keep in mind that's what's important. Now we've had a question about the euro, and I want to bring this up so you'll be able to see pretty much the same thing in the euro, only upside down. Okay. Let's just move up here. You'll be able to see here. Uh, this is the uh, the euro. Now, when you're looking at that point D right there where that says point, just right around that point 0.618, that's equivalent to that dollar index at 9,700. That's why this is so very, very important. It's important for that euro to get above that 112 area. We're trading at 111.60 or something like that this morning. And uh, if it gets above that 112.20 area, that means that the U.S. dollar index is breaking down the euro is breaking up to the upside. And if you get the newsletter, you can go through each of those uh, major cross rates. We did every single one of them. We did the Canadian dollar. We did the British pound. Also, very important resistance at that 130 uh, level. And uh, we did the Australian dollar. That's another one doing pretty much exactly the same thing, ABCD. But that's been in a really, really big downtrend. Let's bring that up here. Not too many tr people trade the Australian dollar, but uh, it's a nice one to trade, especially if you're in Australia. But you can see here, uh, just by looking at the chart here on the Australian dollar, that uh, we are completing that ABCD right at the 61% retracement. It's trading in the same range as it was Friday at uh, 69 and change, small change, as a matter of fact. So that's another one that just setting, you know, right at those numbers. So that's why that dollar index is so important at never 97. 
9700 if it closes below 9700 folks it means that these other uh, currencies are getting ready to move up and that would be one that would be you know very very interesting to uh, pay attention to so let's uh, sort of keep in keep that in mind as you as you look at some of these things now the bonds are down a, a full point today uh, looking like they have no friends at all and maybe they don't. That's the whole key, because they certainly are going down quite a bit. But uh, we'll be watching them very, very closely. We're down to some pretty uh, serious support here, folks, because let's just take a quick look at this on the hourly basis. You're going to be you're going to be seeing here we're right at the old 61 percent retracement here, the old Bondolis. So if you're interested in owning interest rates, this is about as cheap as you're going to get to get it, folks. It's setting right there. And if you look at it really closely, you can see the A, B, C, D pattern forming there also. But it needs to hold 159. We're trading 159.19. You don't want to risk more than about 10 or 12 pips on that. And I, frankly, it drops so quickly from 160.10 to where we are now, you'd probably be better and wait for it to make some type of a uh, firmer bottom here because of that big long-range bar. I know it's the opening bar, but you've got to respect that opening price, folks. And that was in around 160. Uh, 07, and we've dropped all the way down to 169.17. That's a big drop, so it's better to be safe than sorry. So I would certainly wait on that one because uh, we're right there. But the problem is uh, that's the only thing you've got going. You've got a little ABC. Boy, you are right there, too. By golly. I don't know. Very, very, very tempting to buy the bonds here. I wouldn't want to be short right here, but take a look. Let's look at the bonds here on a little bit longer basis here because you can see here that uh, we have a possibility that these bonds have made a, a major top that we've been talking about for quite some time. And you'll you'll see here that uh, if we break that uh, that 158.30 level, oh boy, we're looking at 154 uh, without any any trouble at all. So those are just a few of the ones that we're paying uh, close attention to this morning, but uh, one at a time, as they say in the trade, one at a time. All righty, let's move on to the old gold market. The old gold market, let's take a quick look. Anybody have any questions? Uh, give me a call, 877 927-6648. We're going to have Bill Meridian on, and boy, Bill has been uh, spot on. I know he doesn't, uh, you know, enter those contests like they have at Timer Digest, but by golly, if he did, he would certainly be way up there in the OPEC order because he has been really right on these markets. And uh, on October, uh, middle of October, I think the last time he was on, he gave a big buy signal in the uh, in the stock market. And a caution market in the in the bond, so we'll be interesting to see what Bill has for us uh, today to look at it. But we'll take a quick look here uh, at the gold market. We'll get this up here and we'll just uh, chat about it a bit. Okay, this is a four-hour chart, and we're back into this area. We're trading at around 115.12 today. We got up to highs 115.17. We really need to clear the, the key important price here, folks, to me, is the 1527 level. If you'll notice that uh, red and black line coming together there at the 61 percent retracement, that would take out the September, uh, excuse me, the October highs, which uh, came in at 1526. And from there, we went all the way down, dropped 50 bucks a barrel uh, per ounce to uh, 1477 and then back to here where we are now. But this is a pennant. And it is a bullish pennant because you have higher bottoms, and uh, it certainly looks like it wants to break out to the upside. Hasn't done it as of yet, but it's looking for it. I would really like to see one more washout in the gold, and that would really get uh, really get it going to the downside. Uh, if you want to buy a barrel of gold, that's going to cost you quite a bit, Bill. <laughs> Sorry about that, folks. It's uh, yeah, we, We've changed times out here now, so I'm only two hours different than New York, and I have to adjust for that. So we'll uh, keep going here. Uh, regarding the commodity. Uh, it looks like, just from looking at the charts, if you get the 24-7 futures uh, section, you'll see that uh, we have major, major support down here in the hogs. Let's just bring that up so you folks can uh, take a look at it, because some of these futures are really getting ready to uh, have some pretty big moves, I believe, and one of them could be in the hog market. So we'll get up here to uh, see what it looks like, get these little piggies up here. Um, 
this is can you you know we're in the midst of a terrible thing with uh, these this hog thing over in China but believe me folks they're not buying our hogs back when this thing was popular back in April hogs were trading for 89 cents they dropped almost in half, well not quite in half but they dropped to 57 cents a pound and now we're trading at 64 cents a pound I mean you think they'd be buying some hogs they are, they already own Smith Foods so uh, evidently that hog problem is not nearly as bad as it should now the cattle market's going straight up and the people in the business are trying to say that the Chinese are buying beef boys and girls that is not the case you know they are pork and chicken and egg eaters they eat very little beef i've been over there many many times and to get a good steak you've got to you've got to search and search and search take a break we'll be right back with bill meridian cycles research Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and we're talking with Bill Meridian of Cycles Research. Bill, are you there? Yeah, yeah, I'm just turning down CNBC because who wants to hear them when you can listen to the Larry Pesavento show? Oh, Bill, Bill, be still my heart. <laughs> I wish that were true. Hey, Bill, congratulations on all the great calls. And just like the oh, restaurant you. business, what's on the menu for today, my friend? You want to well, talk about stocks, here. gold, well, and bonds? Well, 
Well, let's go. I sent you the. You, you have the. Yes, um, I've got. The, I got the first one of the three. The three things yep. that we're going to cover. Yep. Yes. Well, broadly speaking, stocks likely to rally into January. Uh, bonds. Uh, I'll explain that when we get to it. Likely to trade in range. There's not a clear pattern there, and gold is likely to uh, rise in November to sixteen hundred, sixteen fifty. So let's go down uh, to three charts. Tell the story. You bet. Uh, at this point. You know, the, the, uh, as you know from having me on, the S&P monthly cycle has pointed up, and therefore all corrections were just very minor. It doesn't peak until January, and now this is the result. You can throw just about everything out here. That, as anybody knows, is an ascending triangle, and uh, you see the S&P has just broken out. The way uh, the, the, the measuring formula is to take the height of that triangle from someplace along uh, between those two lines and to project it up. And as you can see, there's very little downside. What is there, about 20 points downside? And it projects way up to a level that I'm not going to predict. But the point is, there's a very excellent uh, reward risk ratio here. Let's go down to the NASDAQ. Okay. And you see the same pattern on the NASDAQ. And if you take the height of that triangle from the June low, that's 1,000 points. You add 1,000 to the point where it broke out, which is 9,000, which is 12.5% above where we closed. So uh, we go down. We're going to go down one more now to the breadth. And this is confirmed. Look, breadth is at a new high, and uh, this is the one line that you know hasn't hasn't really quit. Look back to 2019. So I don't see uh, anything holding us back here. And uh, if the S and P is up 20 percent by the first of November, then November December have been up every single time. It's been up 20 percent, and and it was. Mm -hmm. So I think you're just about assured that all roads point in one direction for the S&P, and that is up. And the first cycle top of any meaningful uh, size occurs in January. And as we know, using ending in zero on aggregate and on average have the worst equity returns. So mm -hmm. right now, you should be 100 percent invested. I certainly am, and I'm using margin and leverage. So... Uh, you know, my last report that I sent to you, I recommended the uh, ETF that is twice long the NASDAQ based on what I just showed you. I said, you know, it's a few points on the downside and a thousand on the upside. So uh, it's not going to get better than that. And I don't see any divergences or anything telling me that that is not going to happen. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, why is the market up so much? If you go down one, they keep talking about the uh, the economy being weak, the economy is made up of companies, and this is the percent of companies beating their earnings estimate by quarter, 1999 to present, and it's at 73%. Mm -hmm. So this is the highest percentage going back to 98. Wow. So the, really... mar the market is up because everybody's making money. Mm -hmm. Boy, that's a really beautiful one, that's for sure. How is the economy in Austria? It's pretty. You're pretty stable over there all the time, though, aren't you, Bill? Well, I'm I'm in my home outside of Princeton. Uh, I go back on November 20th. It's okay. um, if if there's anything wrong, it's it, it's like there's a fairy tale where they they didn't want to get this old lady upset. And so if there's anything bad in the newspaper, they clip it out before they give her the morning paper. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, I I had a guys guys who run on the uh, they're on a, some European Banking Commission. I met them in London, and I said, well, you know, when they uh, the uh, I had the head of Shinsei Bank, the J Japan's seventh largest bank, come and took him on a tour to all the all the uh, financial institutions, which aren't too many, but um, they were financing the Austrian banks, the building of summer homes for the British and continental tourists in Bulgaria and Romania. And after the meeting, he looked at me and he said, English people buying, you know, uh, you know, summer homes or rental homes or second homes in Bulgaria, or Romania. I don't think so. And when the real estate downturn came, they had to bail the banks out. And the way they did it is they just took what were liabilities, loans, and they just moved them to the asset side of the of the ledger. And that that was the end of the crisis. That's the way they do things. They just paper everything over. Yeah, that makes good sense. And I always say, when you're in Austria, I say, don't worry. If there's anything wrong, they're not going to tell you. <laughs> okay, do you want to cover that monthly S&P cycle uh, well, that you've said? That's a cycle I've been following. And, uh, oh, okay, well, I, I didn't put that up yet. Let's get that up, and then we'll move on to the, we'll move on to the next one. And uh, then we'll get ready here. Hold on a second, Bill. I have to...
do these one at a time. Otherwise, I get a little bit confused, and I'm easily. You want to move over to the bonds now, Bill? What happened to number seven? Uh, I just posted it. Oh, okay. That's the that's well, the, well, the, the long term monthly cycle that you're looking at that yeah, takes well, us up through January. That's uh, that's what I've been following, and okay. all the all the technicals uh, have confirmed this. So now okay. we can go down to number eight. All righty. Look at that up here. This will be the Treasury bonds. Now here you don't have the cycles are conflicting, which is why I'm more neutral. You'll notice on the see the green line, the buy signal. Do you see how uh, notes popped up immediately on Thursday, Friday when that cycle bottomed? Mm -hmm. And uh, it goes up till about the third week of November. So it's, yeah. a, it's in a okay. rally mode right now. But let's go down one because we also have to check the monthly cycle. And you'll note the monthly cycle is at a high. So we now have a conflict. You've got the weekly cycle going up, the monthly cycle going down. When the um, when the monthly cycle, let's see, the monthly cycle will peak in mid-November. And uh, for about a week, the third week in November, both will be pointing up. But as you can see, they're in conflict mm -hmm. until we get to December. So December okay. is now the next time that these two cycles will agree. Now, Larry, if I looked at all of the markets, and they all look like this, they all look doubtful, I just try and pick the best one. But why go put your money here with this doubt when I just show, shown you what is the closest thing to certainty that we are going to see? I like certainty, Bill. Certainty is better than know, doubt. Uh, what did uh, Ru – was it Russell Warren Howe who said the only certainty is a reasonable probability? which is what I'm working on. Hmm. And if we go down one more. <laughs> okay. Boy, you're one smart son of a gun. Hold on just a minute, Bill. Let's get this up here. Oh, oh dear. I can't get the darn. There we go. There we go, my friends. So there's the bond monthly histogram. And as you can see, um, big, uh, big months, July and August. And I was long then based on this because the cycles I just shown you, they all pointed up. So I was mm -hmm. very heavily long bond. There was cycle agreement. Here, mm -hmm. you see October, down in November, down in December. So fourth quarter is usually not very strong. And um, December, remember I, sh I shown you the, the weekly and the monthly cycles fall in December? Mm -hmm. Well, look at December. It's the uh, about the second weakest month historically from 1982 mm -hmm. to the present. So it looks like uh, bonds will be a short in December, but we'll review that when we get there. Okay, we'll be right back after we pay a few okay. words. Okay, pay a few bills. We'll be right back with Bill Meridian. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. 
Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large-cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay, uh, Bill, let's continue on with that gold at $1,625. Uh, you're saying it's going to be up in through January, it looks like? Yeah, well, let's. Uh, do we have the first chart up, uh, page eleven? Yep, that's the one that's up right now. Okay, well, that shows you where we are in seasonality. November, December. Look at this: January, February. So seasonally, is gold up? Yeah, from the October low, it's up into February, and then the seasonal weakness starts. So now let's look at the dynamic cycles, and I put them both on page twelve. Okay. All right, I've got that coming up right now. now. You'll note these cycles are synchronized, unlike bonds, but like the S&P. So for the month of November, the weekly cycle, the monthly cycle, the seasonal cycle, they all point up. That's why I'm coming to that conclusion. And on the next page, we can see how the target was arrived at. It's a breakout from that triangle that you see in the blue lines. Mm -hmm. That's how the target was set. So... In, now, here's where it gets tricky, because now both cycles will top at the end of November. But December and January, February are usually strong. So what can you expect but maybe a sideways consolidation or a, a, a shallow correction? Mm -hmm. So this is what happens when cycles synchronize. Now, gradually, they'll work their way out of phase, and that's when you get these meandering markets that are tough to trade. And you can, uh, if, it's in, if it's in a range, you know, you can, when it gets to the top of the range, you can short it. When it gets to mm -hmm. the bottom of the range, you can make short-term trades. But right now, you should just be 100% long gold. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, one other question someone's just asked is, yeah. uh, do you see gold ever taking out the high of 1932 that we did in August of uh, 2011? Well, I have to say yes for the uh, simple reason is uh, why does gold go up? It is because central banks around the world just produce uh, too much liquidity. I mean, during mm -hmm. the prior administration, they actually doubled the money supply for the first time in history. And as the Bank of America, Merrill Lynch strategist, got up in front of us in New York and said, um, what, when, what, what effect will it have? Or when is the last time it happened? The answer is never. We just know that mm -hmm. excess liquidity drives the whole price level up. It's just a question of where mm -hmm. the liquidity is going. And uh, I was in Abu Dhabi, and I said to a group down there, I said, uh, you know, the governments will curtail their spending when camels learn to fly. And the audience said they fully expected to see a sky loaded with camels before that happened. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the answer is yes, because these guys will not stop. It's the only uh, – Felix Zuloff, he used to be on the roundtable at Cover Barons. He was visiting me in 2000 in Abu Dhabi. And, and Felix and I said, you know, I said, he said, a downturn is coming here. It's a year ending in zero. Same reasoning I'm using now. 
And he said, the, and I said, well, the only remedy these guys know what they're trained to do is Keynesian economics is just inflate the currency some more. Mm -hmm. And uh, President Obama came out and said, well, there's plenty, plenty of liquidity, but the banks aren't lending it out. Well, let me ask you a question. Does the bank run out to the side or grab you, pull you in and force you to take a loan? You borrow money when there's work to be done, when you want to start mm -hmm. some sort of a project. So. Sure. We have a question from uh, Mr. Z in the room, and that's, how do you come up with your weekly and monthly cycles for gold, Bill? Well, it's, uh, it started out this way. The, uh, the way to do that is with spectral analysis, and that was developed uh, first by Gertrude Shirk by hand at the Foundation for the Study of Cycles, then Richard Mogi. And uh, I uh, obtained uh, spectral analysis code, and I, I, I looked at it and I said, this is great if you're working on a Ph.D., in uh, financial projections or quantitative finance, actually, but it doesn't produce a buy-sell signal test. So uh, I added that in. And, uh, you know, it, uh, the, the cycles that test out to be statistically accurate don't necessarily make you money. And my software screens all of those out and leaves you only the cycles that have been making money. Uh, mm -hmm. That's where it comes. That's the difference between what I'm doing and everybody else is doing. And uh, I just, I've told this to professors at the university in Vienna. I've told this to a bunch of researchers over the phone the other night. And uh, on this trip to New York, I visit, I like to go, I was invited to Raven's Pack. They have a, an online platform that goes for two to 3,000. And um, I said, why don't you guys put a buy-sell signal test in here? What's that? And uh, they had a screen, Larry, with all these rectangles with company names in them. And I said, well, the biggest one is Microsoft. So that's the number of news feeds today. And they said, yes. And it's tinted green because they're bullish. They said, yes. I said, well, how do you know they're bullish? Well, the algorithm tells us that. Well, how does the algorithm work? They don't know. And then they hit a button and it says, look at that. See how the price follows the news. See if the news is bad, it goes down. If the news is good. And I said, well, can you project that out into the future? And they said, uh, no. Nobody there ever heard of Art Merrill, Joe Granville, Frankie Joe, any of the great traders, uh, nothing about cycles, mm -hmm. zero. And uh, I talked to my friends at Steve, uh, he graduated Stevens Institute, works for a big insurance company's um, quantitative department. You guys making any money? No. Um, all And um, uh, well, who's up in Bridgeport that um, Ray Dalio? I have an inside source who told me they hired a bunch of quants. They poured a lot of money into it, and they came up with nothing. And these people just mm -hmm. need to have their nose pointed in the right direction, which you and I already know from just having traded the markets, mm -hmm. starting with no computers. So mm -hmm. so that that's a long answer to the question. But should we go down one more here? You bet this is the sign of the bear? Yeah, well, it's uh, always amazing, you know, psychologically. You know, after, after a bear market occurs, then suddenly everybody called it and everybody saw it coming, even though you don't know where they wrote it. And... Um, you get caught up in the euphoria of the previous market or the doldrums of a bear market. You don't see the signs on the wall. Well, here, mm -hmm. earnings price forecasts are falling a little faster than usual. So this is not a contrary indicator. This is um, this means the professional guys are looking at the operations of the individual companies, and they're starting to cut back a little more than usual. And now, during these periods, as my old friend Ian Notley would say, there's so much liquidity around that any Tom, Dick, and Harry can go out and buy anything. So let's look at the next page. This rare is the tripled. Whiskey, yeah. Okay. Rare whiskey uh, vintage index prices have almost tripled in three years. So this is the same thing that happened in the 70s. I mean, suddenly collectible knives, uh, you know, I mean, all sorts of things, mm -hmm. just, you know, gold. They went through the roof. They mm -hmm. weren't becoming more valuable. It was there was too much liquidity. And for some reason, you know, consumer or investor sentiment turned to them. So let's look at the next one, which I think is very important. Share prices are jumping on the day of earnings per share releases. Now, look at that last bar to the right. That means since 2005, you're getting more of an increase in the, in the shares, in the share price on an earnings beat than you have been getting since 2005. Wow. That's, That's an interesting now, statistic, isn't it? Now, let's look at the next page. Here's prices have been rising after earnings per share misses that little gold bar to the right. <laughs> In other words, if you report negative earnings, it's going up anyway. That tells you that there's just too much liquidity and there's too much optimism. Wow. That's awesome. <laughs> and, uh, I never and, saw that, that be enough to scare me to death because when you have bad news and things go up, there's only one way for it to go, and that's higher. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. Uh, I, wow. forgot, I forgot to include them, but there was some uh, – 
uh, artists, I, I don't know how I missed that. Uh, well, it was late last night when I did this, um, that uh, some uh, artwork has gone uh, for a price that just blew everybody away at Sotheby's in London. Mm -hmm. And uh, my friend called me from London and, and he said, hey, Bill, I got a client here uh, I'm advising about investments. She wants to sell a guitar. I said, well, why doesn't she just sell a guitar? Oh. You want to get that on the other side? Yeah, no, stay stay with us, Bill. we got to wind up, and we want to have you we'll back. hear about the guitar. You betcha. 877-927-6648. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back with Bill Meridian. Yep. Bill, I got Skyped by somebody from a very far, far away place Say, is that guy really as good as he sounds? And I had to put a big smiley face on and say, you bet your sweet bippy oh. he is. Well, thank you. And by the way, I <laughs> well, just wanted to tell you, I'm in Barron's today on page M14. Oh, wow. What are they and, saying about you? Well, you know, they're repeating what I just said to you. I said, I forgot to put this stuff up. Well, uh -huh. what I forgot to put up was Banksy set an auction record with his painting of chimpanzees. Oh, yes, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it went for I, 10 million pounds. The bidding went on for 13 minutes. And what I wanted wow. to tell you is my friend in London, he said, the, the lady wants to sell a guitar. So why didn't you just sell it? He says, well, she uh, wants more than 3 million for it. And I said, well, why? And he said, well, it was played at Woodstock. Who played it? My late husband, Alvin Lee. <laughs> it's 10 years after. 
<laughs> I would think $3 million would be a fair price. Everything else is going for that. I saw that picture of those chimpanzees. I wouldn't pay more than a quarter for it at a garage sale, but, you know, what do Me I know? Me too. That's right. <laughs> Tell us about your planetary stock trading YouTube channels and stuff, Bill. Uh, well, uh, let me just um, – uh, what else did I want to tell you? Oh, the uh, – yeah, I'll be going to one of my my dear friends here is having an, an her art opening Thursday, so I'll learn more about the art market. As far as I know, that's pretty solid, but now I'm hearing signs of weakness in the uh, New York City housing market. And yeah, uh, the people too. I know are building the, – they're going to Philadelphia to build. It's much more uh, much more reasonable. Yeah. Um, so anyway, if uh, if you go down – well, Planetary Stock Trading is uh, one of my four books. Mastering Geopolitical Prediction is um, uh, the second of, of the four books. And um, I have a, a YouTube channel uh, that I haven't updated in an age because I'm too busy trading. And um, and I, I got to tell you this one story. What, what do we have left? About four minutes? Oh, no, we got about 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Okay. Yeah. A friend of mine friend of mine sends me, he says, Bill, I want you to meet this Russian woman. She does doggy style. I emailed him. <laughs> I said, are you crazy? Do you say? And he said, wait a minute. I said, you, you CC'd her on this? And he says, yeah, why not? It turns out it's a new software app she designed for pet owners. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> and when I told her the story, she was hysterical. She said, that's why I named it that. Oh, dear heavens. Hey, Bill, thanks for joining us, buddy. We'll have you on again soon. Okay, Bill Meridian, up. folks, Cycles. Keep up the great work and travel safe, my friend. Okay. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily...